Vice-Chairs, Deans of all the universities from Thailand, um, this morning, um, welcome you all to President Princess Kalayani Mutana Institute of Music. And here this morning, we have a chance to um, discuss just a little bit about the quality assurance in higher music education, the European perspective. And today, I have the honor of introducing Professor Ms. Tokel Stottier uh, from Taunton School of Music, University of Southern California. Um, Professor Miss, she's now forming, founded the music department of Iceland Academy of the Arts and was dean of music until 2016. She was the head of Academy of Music and Drama of the Uni University of Gothenburg, and she has been a member of the board of the Association of Nordic Music Academics since 2002, and then also a council member of the European Association of Music Conservatory, or AEC, between 2006 and 2012. She's also a founding and a board member of MUSIC here, uh, European Quality Enhancement and Accreditation Agency for Higher Music Education. So uh, today her experience in working a lot with about the quality assurance and everything then can possibly shed some lights to us of what quality should mean in music education. So please give a big applause to <laughs> Professor Ms. Stalker's <laughs> dot here. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I have to say it seems a little odd or daunting even to come here and talk about quality and higher music education after having experienced the last days here where uh, from the really inspirational keynotes and presentations to the wonderful multimedia performance productions the last two nights and just simply being here and in this wonderful institution uh, seeing the remarkable things that have been accomplished in such a very short time. There's no doubt that we are actually living quality music education. Uh, that being said, I'm not going to be speaking about quality in music higher music education in itself, rather what we measure when we are measuring that from the European point of view. Unfortunately, that's the only point of view that, that I know <laughs> so far. Um, and from the, uh, also from the point of view of uh, accreditation, which is something that has besieged us in Europe, especially in the last decade. Uh, so I will first just tell a little bit about my own experience uh, and then I will run you through a slideshow presenting, as Anotai said, Musik, which is the only accredited accreditation agency uh, for music in Europe and actually the only one for arts in general. Uh, yes. So, bear with me, it can be a little bit bureaucratic at times. That's kind of the nature of what we are discussing. This past summer, I, as in many, many previous years, spent time with my family in Tuscany, in Italy. In the, amongst the rolling, beautiful rolling hills of Tuscany, the days are spent sunbathing, swimming, reading, hiking, uh, cooking, eating, and tasting wines. Tuscany is one of the Italy's uh, foremost wine producing regions, especially famous for its red wines. And there are many sub-regions within Tuscany producing a great variety of red wines, but most have at their core the grape Sangiovese, which is typical to Tuscany and gives the, the particular Tuscan flavor, though the quality of the grape varies depending on the terrain it's grown in. The different producers then make their own wines, mixing different grape varieties with the Sangiovese in varying quantities that give each a distinctive character, characteristic and flavor. Wine producers and wine lovers from all over seek out these defining special characteristics 
and qualities, and they delight in the differences. It struck me as I was contemplating the notion of, of quality in higher music education in Europe that it is in some ways similar to the wines. There's a common core. This core is distinctive. Yet, as with the Sangiovese grape, it varies somewhat depending on the terrain it grows in and how it is infused with local character to create a distinctive flavor or education. Of course, I'm not here to talk about wine, but <laughs> This little story or metaphor actually explains what is at the heart of the notion of quality in music education, not only the acknowledgement that every country and every academy has its own distinctive characteristic, but also the celebration of these differences. I want to stress this, as it's very important to understand that central to the way quality is defined in an institution in Europe is how well it lives up to its own unique goals and aspirations. So let me take a little bit closer look. In discussing quality in higher music education, it needs to address both art and education. Sorry. The concept the concept of quality, on the one hand, addresses standards in a particular artistic discipline, such as music, and on the other hand, educational quality that includes generic issues as the organization and management of the curriculum, governance, internal and external communication, and student involvement. Interestingly, for many years, the main focus of the music sector has been only on the artistic standards. For example, in the way uh, the institutions assess students through performance uh, examinations and the huge importance given to competitions. For some institutions, that is the main measure of how well they are doing. The parallel attention to educational quality has only developed recently in Europe, greatly influ influenced by the emergence of quality assurance as a part of the Bologna Declaration process over the past decade. Uh, just to explain, the Bologna Declaration was signed in Bologna, Italy, in 1999 by all the ministers of education in Europe, promising a massive educational reform throughout the higher education sector in order to make higher education in Europe more compatible and comparable across the countries and across the continent with the aim of promoting internationalization or mobility between the various universities and educational institutions. The overall aim, of course, was and still is to promote understanding by bringing the countries of Europe closer to one another. But now there's generally an understanding that the existing of an overall quality culture in which artistic standards and educational quality go hand in hand will further reinforce the overall teaching and learning experience. As a result, in addition to the existing tools addressing artistic standards like the performance uh, examinations I, I just mentioned. Uh, internal quality assurance systems have been introduced in higher music education institutions in most European countries. And I understand also here. Um, these have been modeled according to common char characteristics and even if they have been gradually adapted to music, they mainly address basic educational quality issues, uh, which are like feedback mechanisms and student involvement. I first became in intricately familiar with the term quality and quality enhancement when I was elected to the Council of the AEC, which is the Association of European Conservatoires, 10 years ago. I have to say that I was quite disturbed, to put it mildly. I felt like so many of our colleagues that this is yet another EU thing imposed upon us and had very little relevance to music. As musicians, we all know when a performance is good, bad, or magical, when a piece is okay or amazing, we know the elements in music that define for us whether it is of quality. In other words, we know those qualities 
that can't be measured. Yet now, I was tasked with not only advocating, but actually making quality assurance central to our schools. So why did the AEC make, make this so central to their efforts? The AEC uh, is a European cultural and educational network bringing together 280 schools from 55 countries, some from outside of Europe. Its vision is to be the leading voice for European higher music education. And the mission's first statement is that the association works for the advancement of European higher music education. So since the signing of the Bologna Declaration, the AEC has worked to interpret for music education the reform mandated. Again, when I became a council member, the AEC was already pro proactive in defining what constitutes quality in higher music education and how to measure it. They were working on creating methods that make sense for music and helpful to the musical education institutions themselves. In other words, methods specifically for music quality enhancement and accreditation. Now the council members of the AEC have certain tasks assigned to them and mine was in this area of quality work. I was assigned to chair their quality enhancement committee and we had a special mandate to store and potentially create an agency for quality enhancement and accreditation with the ultimate goal to be registered by, by ENCA, which is the Registry of European Accreditation Agency. That's a fully licensed or accredited agency to operate in most European countries. Not a small task, especially when, as I said earlier, I was quite skeptical. What was, however, clear was that the existing national accreditation systems in place were not only inappropriate to music, but even dangerous to the core of what we do. It became increasingly obvious we needed a unique body to focus solely on music. This body had to have at, at it, its primary concern the preservation of the highest artistic standards, so in rea reality, there was only one way forward. One of the ingenious ideas from the be beginning was using international peer reviewers as an important tool in the review procedures and thus establishing a new form of cooperation between the European institutions. The idea of a peer from another country not only gives an international dimension to the whole process, but also gives the peers a chance to know an institution intimately. The interaction establishes a new kind of trust, focuses on enhancement rather than judgment, as the peers genuinely come with the aim of being helpful and it promotes mobility between the institutions. Now, if you are like me, you are probably not excited about having this kind of reviews and accreditation imposed on you. I can, however, say with all honesty that after I actively took part in re reviewing several institutions and the academy I headed underwent a full review of this type, I found the whole process incredibly helpful in the advancement of quality in my own institution. And it is with this reality in mind and the strong belief that artistic standards and educational quality must come together that Musik, Music Quality Enhancement, was established in 2014 to support the enhancement of quality in higher music education. Musik now offers various external quality assurance services in the form of evaluation and review visits and formal accreditation procedures. In all the music procedures, attention is given to both educational quality issues and artistic standards and musical content. And to slightly explain how that works, I have, for instance, uh, during a review, attended both an, a recital examination and the discussions afterwards with the assessment co committee. So as a peer reviewer, I've been able to assess two aspects, how the institution deals with uh, artistic standards in terms of, of assessment and grading, and how the formal aspects of the assessment, the presence of rules for examiners, the use of assessment criteria, type of feedback given to the students are being handled. Now taking this example and going back to my initial metaphor of Italian winemaking, 
I might not personally like a particular bottle of wine I'm reviewing, but that is not what is important. Instead, knowing the flavor and character of the institution through being a peer reviewer possessing knowledge and authority, I can determine whether the bottle is good or not, and more importantly, though perhaps not my favorite wine, I'm able to appreciate that it's the perfect pairing for their location, the right match for what is being served in that particular place. So, what have I learned through all this? Basically three things. Thinking and talking about quality and education is important. We can only enhance the teaching and learning environment in our institutions if we are conscious of, about areas of improvement and we are flexible enough to make the necessary changes when they are identified. Secondly, having critical colleagues helping to identify areas of potential improvement as well as reassuring us in what we do well and having the opportunity to share knowledge and experiences with these critical peers is invaluable. And finally, each institution and each situation is unique. What we all do is train our students to touch lives. So we must remember that our primary goal must be to serve our art form while constantly serving our students, making sure we are always in tune with our particular what our particular situation demands. So now I would like to take you up to Musik. Musik, music quality enhancement. We were extremely proud of ourselves, by the way, our, the committee when we came up with that name. <laughs> Is an independent European level external evaluation body which has the aim to assist higher music education institutions in their own enhancement of quality and to improve the quality of higher music education across Europe and beyond. Musik offers services with one underlying philosophy, a focus on quality enhancement in programs, institutions, and the sector at large. Musik has three partner organizations. It has AEC as a partner. It has European Music School Union, which is the umbrella union for all pre-college music schools. And it has the Performing Arts Employers Association League, PEARL. That's the umbrella organization for, for orchestras, opera houses, theaters, so the professional uh, umbrella organization. The involvement of, of EMO and PEARL enable a structured dialogue with the music profession and help to establish the reputation and credibility of music in the world of music. The organization of music is as follows. The board is made up of, of five members. The majority is AEC, always to ensure that the majority uh, are the people concerned with the higher education in music. So three members from AEC and one from Pearl and one from EMU. Music utilizes also the offices of AEC in Brussels, and the music employee uh, is shared with AEC, that is, it has designated time to work on music. When confronted with the Bologna accreditation rules, many, if not to say almost all the music academies in Europe were horrified to be judged on the basis of rules which were mostly adapted to, to the world of science, business, and management, music academies felt that these rules didn't fit their needs at all. This led to the eventual creation of music and the development of music-specific criteria for evaluating the quality of the education in, in any given institution based on the institution's own mission statement. In traditional university educations, the criteria for evaluation and meeting the standards is fairly well accepted and defined. In music education, the idea of being able to measure quality is quite new and even unaccepted as a concept of quality is traditionally connected to the artistic ability alone. However, educational quality is increasingly being recognized as contributing to the overall student learning experience, and music brings both aspects together. 
what does MUSIC offer? On the one hand, MUSIC offers institutional and program reviews alone or jointly with national quality assurance agencies and accreditation agencies. And on the other hand, MUSIC also offers services such as reviews, reviews of joint programs, which are now very hot in Europe and in the Nordic countries. They want to promote joint programs, which are when students actually study in two or three or four different institutions. And formal accreditation pro procedures tailored to the characteristics of higher music education institutions. And MUSIC also provides support to institutions in the area of quality assurance enhancement through its quality assurance desk for institutions and programs, which is set up as a hotline for any questions on the MUSIC tools or guidance, as well as general questions linked to the quality assurance and accreditation. One of the most useful help is providing assistance to institutions who are supposed to undergo review or an accreditation and, and how to best prepare themselves for that. I am sorry, I think the slides are in a different It hasn't been making any sense what I've been saying or what? It's okay? This is what I was doing. Respecting the special characteristics of higher music education, encouraging institutions to reflect on who they are, where they aim to go, assisting the institutions in developing their own internal quality culture, respecting the, di the diversity of different nations and situations, and finally bringing a European or international dimension to the procedure by using international peer review. The MUSIC procedures are characterized by flexibility. All of them include the following steps. An analytical self-evaluation report prepared by the institution, which the team of peer reviewers gets sent. And then there's an on-site visit, a minimum one and a half days by peer reviewers, during which they meet various stakeholders, such as members of the management team, the academic, artistic, and administrative staff, students, and representatives of the profession, and have the opportunity to visit classes and lessons and attend concerts, recitals, and in some cases, as I mentioned before, exams. The outcome is either an advisory report highlighting good practice and including a set of recommendations for further improvement, which is in the case of quality enhancement, or a report which, in addition to that, uh, concludes with a formal recommendation for granting accreditation. Three sets of have been designed to meet the different institutional needs. A set of standards for institutional review to be used for reviews covering the whole institution. A set of standards for program review to be used for the evaluation of one or more programs with an institution. And a set of standards for the joint program re review. Each set of standards is then divided into three columns. The first, the first column standards list the standards to be met in each type of review. There are 17 standards in total distributed across eight primary domains of inquiry. The domains are this first one, mission and vision, educational processes, student profiles, teaching staff, facilities, resources, organization and decision-making processes, internal quality culture, and lastly, public interaction, which is one of the most important ones when we're looking at arts institutions. And the one that's very 
much uh, lacking in the no regular um, uh, regular procedures for scientific universities usually. The second column, questions to be considered when addressing the standard, includes for each standard a series of questions relevant to the identification of good practice in the area of that standard. These questions are aimed at encouraging the institution to look into the issue raised and to reflect on its own practice and on the possible need to improve in this area. And the third and last column is about supportive material or evidence, which gives an indication of what type of evidence the institution should provide the review team with. Now, just to give you an example, because I'm not going to go through all of these, these um, uh, domains and, and standards, uh, you can do that on the MUSIC website. Uh, but I would just to explain what I was saying, this is from the educational process, the, the second domain. And you see the standard simply states, the goals of the program are achieved through the content and structure of the curriculum and its methods of delivery. Very clear standard. And then you see the questions to be considered when addressing the standard. That is, how does the curriculum reflect the institution's mission? What are the learning outcomes? How does the program enable students to develop individual study profiles? And where appropriate, is there a connection or progression between programs? So this is. Um, we feel that this is, this is just very concise and easy, really, to, to answer to these questions. Um, it does not ask for the specific content, because that's up to each individual institution. And then it gives a list of, the, of supporting material to use as evidence. And then from the same domain, just to show you how important internationalization or international perspective is when discussing quality assurance in higher music education in Europe, this standard states, the institution offers a range of opportunities for students to gain an international perspective. It's, uh, and then the questions to be considered, you know, what is the strategy for that? To what extent do the study programs and the extracurricular activities broaden the student's international perspective? How is the institution participating in international partnerships or exchanges? How are incoming and outcoming students and staff supported? Uh, does the inst institution have international teachers delivering part of the curriculum? And ha how have teachers developed international expertise? Again, quite concise and a very important standard. Now, who can use music? All higher education institutions, and there are numerous benefits. The music peer reviewers are international specialists in the relevant musical fields. Institutions therefore receive tailor-made recommendations formulated by competent colleagues. The reviews are based on internationally accepted standards taking into account the specificities of the sector and are also compatible with generic international and national standards used in higher education. Musique emphasizes the enhancement dimension of quality insurance. In all review procedures, the main focus is how the institution or the program can be further developed and how it can improve. Music helps institutions to establish an international reputation and contributes to building trust between institutions. And the flexible structure offers diverse services to institutions, including guidance to institutions wanting to develop, the, to develop their quality assurance systems by offering targeted advice and organizing professional development activities. In addition, through the Quality Assurance Desk, management, teaching staff, and students in higher music education consult MUSIC. And last but not least, national quality assurance and accreditation agencies interested in joint procedures can use MUSIC and benefit from its subject-specific expertise. And that is actually happening quite a bit, uh, where national agencies are either asking MUSIC to do the review for them when it's music-specific, or asking for one or two uh, peer reviewers with music as a specialty. Yeah. 
all MOSIC procedures result in concrete recommendations from pre peer reviewers with a background in the field of music, and the quality of the education and services offered to students will be improved. All review teams include a student. This way, music students become increasingly involved in quality assurance issues and develop a greater understanding of the procedures. Student feedback also plays an important role in the review processes and is considered in the recommendations made. Finally, by building trust between institutions through the use of comparable standards, MUSIC contributes to the recognition of studies and qualifications, thus facilitating student mobility and employability. Our aim is clear. It is that MUSIC will become the go-to provider for review and accreditation in music in Europe and beyond. An increasing number of countries allow any agency registered on ERCAR to carry out accreditation and evaluation procedures. Therefore, it is so important that MUSIC was formally registered on ERCAR and is the only arts accreditation agency on the registry. Currently, also standards and procedures for the pre-college level institutions and teacher training programs are being developed. And finally, there are many multidisciplinary performing arts institutions and MUSIC has the potential to act as a review body for these institutions as well. There have already been uh, at least a couple of, of reviews where dance has been included and one where there was circus included uh, so then the, the peer review team also includes specialists in those areas. Finally, this is what music is all about, being accountable and also focused on improving ourselves, being mission driven, confirming the international reality of our profession, strengthening credibility of the sector, showing this is something we can organize ourselves and being central in the development of, of quality enhancement. I just let that come along. A little bit of PR here. <laughs> that is actually the website where you can get information. There's the framework document and, and the description of the standards. Uh, and all kinds of other information, so feel free to visit that website. Uh, the MUSIC QE, Quality Enhancement, that is EU. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mist. So that was actually really to set at least a framework for us to discuss on just now. And, and I really agree that by all this kind of standard, we're not do it for making our life difficult, but it's actually try in trying to help to raise the standard, making more collaborations, and as you say, create trust between the institutions. So for now, I would like to invite another two guests who's also very experienced in this as well. So the first person, if I could invite Professor Jacques Moreau uh, from Director of Cefetem Ron Alp, Lyon, France. Um, Professor Moreau, he's actually one of the founders of all the curriculums that we have in PGUAM and all the designs and everything has been done uh, based on the inspirations and a lot of uh, suggestion by Professor Moreau. So please, if I could invite you on stage. Um, now, Professor Jacques Morrow is now can be on stage. Can. He's also um, a member of the AECs and working together with uh, Professor Mist, and also very experienced in working as about uh, quality assurance. And he's also uh, supervising so many universities in Europe in uh, that assessing the quality. And another person um, 
Ms. Jenny Yang, the Senior Associate Director in Strategic Planning and External Relations of Yong Siu Tong Conservatory, Singapore. So if I could invite you, Jenny, we are also working in collaboration many times in terms of this kind of institutional review. So please, if I could invite you. So my, my first questions or maybe proposals will be, how do you see um, Ms. Jenny and Professor Mo of how uh, this standard of the music can be applied into this region of Southeast Asia? Um, if I could go first. <laughs> well, in Asia, it is normally more polite to let others go first, but I think it's going to be less stressful for me if I went ahead and if I could be brave and lead the way. Sometimes being brave is also being naive, but I think first mover advantage, I'll go first. When I first saw the title for this morning's topic, which was quality assurance, and before I saw Miss introduction paragraph, um, the first notes that I wrote down for myself was what is quality, and quality from whose perspective? Quality is often such an intangible and mercurial quality that it's really hard to define and hard to grasp. You sort of always do this when you describe quality. Um, for factory production lines, and if you're talking about sales, quality can be assured in more straightforward ways. You can easily quantify efficiency, accuracy, how much sales, how much profits, how fast you do something. Um, and there are all sorts of tools and equations one can measure for production lines. But for music and art and education, like wine, it's not so straightforward. An expert wine person can swivel the wine glass, take a sniff and then goggle, and then tell you the wine has notes of crisp apples and cinnamon with cherry overtones or whispers of lavender and tulips and cactus and all of that. But less well-endowed people, like and less expert people like me, I can only say, mm, I like it or mm, maybe it's okay. Or I could be influenced if you tell me the bottle is a few hundreds of dollars. It's from this famous chateau. And of course, it is very, very old. And it's going to be good for my health. I might take a larger gulp and try really hard to taste this lavender and cactus flavors. So knowing how and understanding, knowing and understanding how and why we measure quality and from whose perspective is I feel very critical. As institutions, we must balance the dichotomy between experts and the market's economy, uh, uh, market economy's perspective of quality. Uh, the expert's view is very valuable and important, um, in which we must trust and respect their craft. But we also need to recognize that there is also market economy which is driven by social, cultural circumstances. These are our audiences, our students, the governing bodies that create or dictate critical policies, often to do with funding, our partners, what they expect of us, our community that surrounds us and that will support us. And just, a general, just knowing the general direction of travel, that the world is moving to ahead. Often, we as experts, we want to preserve something that we have spent so much time and energy on. We risk preserving it in like formaldehyde. You know, if it's for the museum, it's there, it's pretty, it's good, it has to be this certain way. We mustn't dilute ourselves. And often rules and regulations are set out and it stays around for a long, long time. And we then just take it for granted, we follow, because it's easier to follow rules and regulations rather to fight it. Some departments we know are so bureaucratic that you wonder who really actually read the report that you are asked to 
write pages and pages on and then you realize if you follow that piece of paper, it goes from this person to that person and then it goes to the office in the basement and it just gets filed away. But you're told that you have to do it, you have no choice. However, I think there comes a time when we should begin to question why these rules and regulations are in place. I might sound like the QA quality assurance process is tedious and it's bad for you and it's designed to be inflexible and restrictive and it's like needing to jump through hoops and the hoops are not even just simple circular hoops, they are like, if you know the American game show where there is a cutout of a cardboard and it moves towards you and you have to contort yourself to jump through the board this way or this way. So I think sometimes these assessments risk being designed to make you jump through or contort yourself to jump through hoops that maybe is there just to make it difficult for you. So you should just whatever you do, whatever we do, question and think why we have to jump through it. Um, so rather than seeing these as imposing restrictions though, we should also see these assessment processes as being an opportunity to recognize any performance gaps that we might face and use it as an opportunity to enable changes and transformations that we want to bring in our institution. So coming back to Anutai's question, how we could bring music back into Asia. I really like, this is the first time I've seen the presentation of music and I really, really like it because I, I see the value that allows space for it to be catered for individual institutions. It's not just sets of boxes you have to take, you have to do 10 of these and five of that to get two of those and three of those that will count. It's not that. And it's getting a group of peers, people from your industry, people who you trust to come together and it, it's sort of a trusting process rather than a critical one where you are good in this, you are bad in that. And however, <laughs> Here comes the but. Um, we should, especially in Asia, I think, we should recognize that not all of us um, can just adopt music wholesale. It wouldn't work. It, because different institutions might have different expectations of themselves and people's expectations of them. You, some, has high, some have high um, international aspirations, like the one I come from. Um, the Institute Conservatory in Singapore, it's set up to be, well, the mission is to be a world-class conservatory. It's set up with high institution, uh, international awareness. Um, but others who are, who are also doing fantastic work in Asia have got more local responsibilities, and so your own criteria will have to work for yourselves. So taking, embracing what works in music and fitting it into what, what can work for you would be critical rather than thinking, okay, that's the good thing and it's from Europe, it must be good and then just plant it into yourself. Yeah, um, thank you, Jenny. I think exactly what you're saying is, is right. And that's one of the things that, um, I mentioned flexibility with music. That's one of the things that, that uh, we have actually done when we, are operating in countries that are quite have maybe different realities than the majority of the of the uh, European academies. I can state, you know, um, Armenia uh, as a as an example, very different reality. There, um, well, Russia has different traditions. Uh, also. Uh, the Balkan countries have quite different realities. Sometimes it's because of traditions and sometimes it's just because of the way how life has treated them, so to speak. Um, then Musik has worked very carefully with 
in some cases, the national agencies, which, which are in place, and if they aren't with the institutions, to really adjust, never compromise the standards themselves, as you, because as you can see, there are just a few standards, and they are in, in themselves clear, but to make sure that the questions are relevant to those institutions. And uh, actually, we've had quite a bit of success with that, but, but uh, that has not been tested outside of, of the European uh, economic area, I can say. Well, uh, yes, I, I can attest that um, music is not providing an idea of what an institution should be or should refer to. It really is on the process of, as it was sh sh shown on the screen, it really is looking at what are the goals of your institution and how do you implement those goals? What are the means you choose to reach the goals? And it's only on that aspect. It's not, we have a model, we have representations, we have what we foresee of your institution. We just work with you to help you reflect on what you are, what you say you are. Because the main question when you lead an institution, when you work in an institution, is that you generally say, we are this, we are this. And when you look inside, generally you find some differences. There is a funny experience I made one day I was looking on the website of a very famous institution and they were saying that, well, the teacher, one teacher was saying, well, I train my student by research. I, I leave him search and I, I'm expecting him to find himself. And there was a video shown. The student was playing, stopped played. The teacher asked a question. She had no time to give the answer. He immediately gave the answers and really told the student what she should do. So we can say something and act differently. And having this external review helps the institution to comfort itself or to improve things. And this is uh, having myself in, in Sefer and Ronald, we had a review of music, and this review went quite well because the, during the three days the, the reviewers came into in the institution, it's a very untypical institution. Why is, is it untypical? Because at that time we only had uh, not a total first cycle because the French system is quite odd in some ways, and uh, we are only devoted to teaching. And that was not a problem for them. They just came in and saw how we deal with the students, how we allow the students to improve the teaching of the institution, etc., etc. And that went quite well. And myself, I headed a committee and we had to review the four Belgium, French Belgian part of ins, uh, four institutions, higher institutions. And what was really interesting in the committee is that at the start, people were coming, of course, not knowing the institution, coming with ideas. And those ideas are also improved. There's a work of the committee itself during the review. We have ideas, we have representations, but we are confronted to that reality. So doesn't, maybe it doesn't match with our ideas, but how can we 
only stay on what they need and not what we think of what they should need. And this is very important. Maybe later I will come back on that for student education. Because when you review, you have to be, in a way, humble. And the problem with those four institutions, they were all four different. And many of them were very, were not reaching the, uh, what the, the reviewers were thinking of what a higher institution should be. At, and at the end, when we had to write the reports, it was really funny to see that the one who were the most uh, hard with some positions had totally changed their mind at the end, being only on the institution interest. So that's why when you review an institution, you, you can't pop in and go back. You have to stay and to understand and to talk with all the stakeholders inside, outside. And this is the wonderful job I can attest music is doing. But maybe for another question now, it's the question of quality is, was before a question of profession. And my opinion is that today the question of quality has slightly, I should say, slightly changed. Because it's, for me, no more a question of profession, but a question of society. And what means quality when you educate a student, when you match the education to the society needs? This changes all the, the perspectives on an institution of art. But this is another question. Actually, this last point that you were making, which, is, which comes to the, to the eighth domain of the questions of music, as you, pro as you know, uh, the, uh, and which I talked about was emerging as one of the most important areas of inquiry, that's the uh, engagement with community, actually. And, th and those are the kinds of things then that are looked at, how the institution first of all, engages with community, how it prepares students to do so, um, what kind of support does it give students to go out and do things on their own, are, are the teachers active in this area? So all those, th all those questions are actually embedded in the last standards, which is quite interesting because it, when, when music was being developed, that had not emerged as such a strong feature as it now as it's now recognized as yeah i completely agree and that like ties in with the importance of impact like what does it matter if your students win international competition so it, it's this for the students glory but really what value does it bring to society to the community so that part is really critical and it's been wonderful hearing that many institutions are recognizing this, for example, Jeff Shaki's um, collaborative efforts and really having like a key, playing all the right cards. You are linked to royalty, but you also link to really deep down in the community and Annotize uh, here at PGVIM, working so intimately and influencing uh, intimately with the, just the surrounding neighborhood, working so intimately with the children here. And that impact is powerful. The children here will remember that for the rest of their lives, and that's changing the whole generation. And that is powerful. Yes. Uh this is really complicated because previously uh, we were, this is a main topic for me uh, actually, because 
institutions were or on the professional side or on the social side by learning how to teach, learning how to go in communities, learning how to do outside. And actually, there is a French philosopher, Edgar Morin, who said that this system of or and or led the Western side and mainly Europe to a catastrophe because the reality is and, and, not either or, but and, and, and. Meaning that our conservatoires, of course, they have to provide elements to reach the professional standards, but they have to offer real possibilities of developing those so society concerns, which is community, but which is not only communities, it's also the whole society. How do I address myself? How do I bring art to the whole society? Not only those one, those one and those one. And this is complex. We are, because that means that there is no one bunch of students. Of course there is a bunch of students, but there are if there are bunches of 30, there are 30 one student, 30 times one student. And how do you allow this one student to reach his personal goals and to de develop himself? This recalls me of the, uh, the famous, in Europe, the famous Bildung that allowed a man called Humboldt to recreate a university in Berlin in the, in the beginning of the 19th century, only based on the personal development of one, of the, the, the man reaching his personal needs, not his ego needs, but his needs for his human development. And this is the most difficult because there is no one way, there is no method. Only one method is research. The only way to do this is to set, to put a research environment as soon as the student enters. And this is what Jeffrey showed yesterday. This is what another institution in the other part of the world, in Melbourne, does also, an institution of art, saying that there is no wrong artist. There is no wrong way of being in art. And how do you grow in that way? And this, for me, is quality. And I think that of course, the, more, the most connections you can do with other arts, with other people, is important. But you know that in the experimental field, you can't reproduce exactly the reality. This will come later. So you have to provide the students with even slightly experimenting, experiment to be able to improve. So the most opportunities of improvement you offer a student, the most you can reflect with him. And this is part of the criteria of music. And this part is growing, I think, because the profession st is still there, and I hope, sincerely hope, for a long time but it's not the only way of being in music. Uh, Peter Renshaw wrote a paper saying, being in tune uh, in October, September 2013, a very important paper for me, because in this paper, he writes down for him what an institution should deal with. And I will quote those five interconnections for him 
you have f five interconnections for, for an institution. That could be kind of a, for him, it's a new paradigm. And it could be kind of new criteria. So interconnection between a social and artistic imperative. In interconnection between access and quality. Access of all, but quality for all. Interconnection between context and excellency, we spoke of that. Music for the context, but also music for excellency. And what the really thing, important thing he says is that you can't go towards a community, a community if you are not a really excellent musician, excellent artist. It's not providing low standard music. It's being deeply excellent in music. Otherwise, you are um, cheating with others. And interconnection be be between creativity, innovative, and risk-taking. And this, Jeffrey showed example yesterday. Interconnection between research, personal, artistic, and professional development. And on that point, I'm making not its or professional development or research. It is personal research, even for professional development, meaning you can find yourself the way to resolve your problems if you have an environment where you can try, improve, e experiment. And then he gives a lot of criteria on artistic research, interpers interpersonal and communicative um, competencies. So in this paper, he's giving example of what for him is a musician in the communities. And the opera we saw, Anatai showed us what they did with the opera, kids' opera. And I am sure that this example could have been in that paper. And what is for me amazing in this institution is that the first implementation was not the curriculum, was not the research, was that musician in the community, that Education Populaire, which is one of the goals of PGVIM. So this concept of quality is not falling apart. It's going, being able to find the inner core quality of each and the inner core quality of each institution, but certainly regarding all those problems of the nowadays society, which is an urge for everybody, I think. In response to the Peter Renshaw being shown, I think maybe um, being in tune, I think possibly the quality you are trying to hint to us is the idea of how we actually respond to the need of the society, am I right, in, in putting it that way? So it's not, as, as Jenny said, that it's not about the glory of the students of how they do in professional <laughs> and and not all professionals, all society, but it's professional development. The glory of the students goes hand in hand with how the students are actually giving back to the society around them. So maybe any last word from Miss or Jenny? We can have a little bit of time, or maybe if I could take it back from from our audience here, do you have anything? Um, is your institutions has any cases that you would like to ask or you'd like to rest? Thanks, Jeffrey. I can just make a, a brief comment on music. Um, Miss mentioned the ECAR accreditation, and I served on the. Uh, I was one of the committee that investigated music, um, deeply looking at its principles 
its method of operation and its past experience and recommended it to ECAR for accreditation. Um, and just one of the things I can commend to all of you, I, I worked in the United States and they have a, also an accreditation program called NASM. And it, it, you know, it's, it's well intended and uh, serves a lot of folks. But there's a key difference between it and music. And uh, NASM has a kind of bureaucratic uh, ethos, which says you must have this percentage of your courses in theory and this percentage of your courses in general education. And we found as conservatoires, we were struggling to fit in what we were doing compared to a giant university that had lots of music education students and lots of research connected with medicine. Uh, and what we were ending up doing is trying to hand pick visitors that at least had a conservatoire experience so they could be sympathetic. So what I really admire about music is that it starts from the broad philosophical prin principles that you heard Nist and, and Jacques um, mention. And it's not uh, dictating that you must do this, this, and this. It's saying, what are you trying to do? Uh, and how do you feel you're achieving what you're trying to do? And asking questions is something that we all, as conservatoire leaders, um, you know, need to be doing all the time, testing our assumptions. Um, and it, it's a great process um, internally to have. Very much. So it's it's a peer, uh, the peer review that do understands of what we do and and give emphasis on the individuality of each institutions. Any comments from my colleagues in Southeast Asia? Yes, please, Mr. Sir. These are sort of rather global questions, so maybe I'm coming too early. In the discussion, but I don't know when you're winding up. So I'm going to go. First of all, a comment, which is uh, to thank people on the stage, because the process of quality assurance has matured and grown somewhat. I remember I developed the first community course, music community course, as part of a university in the UK, and we were visited by the early quality assurance people. The report was terrible on us most humiliating things I've been through in my life to the extent that um, I got information from you know, the university. In those days, I ran a faculty, um, so straight from the university that I will probably have to close our community course. Um, fortunately, the same week, we won the Queen's Prize, not just for the best course in music, but the best higher education course in the United Kingdom. It's a cautionary tale, uh, and it's nice to see the maturity that's come. Now something serious, um, and it's an international question. Um, we have between 100 and 200 million children on our planet in no education, uh, refugee population. Um, and uh, I'm raising, this is something I want to raise personally with the people on the platform. Uh, it's a private conversation, but I'm raising it publicly because there may be somebody here who has some ideas. Um, uh, I'll take the example of Lebanon because in Syria because I know it well. In Lebanon, we have half a million children, ref Syrian refugees, children. Um, we've managed to get 14% into formal education in Lebanon. And that's been a challenge for Lebanon but international money has helped a bit. So 14%, uh, we can say, are fine. They, they're, they're in the Lebanese system, an accredited system will get qualifications. We've managed to get 60% of the rest into informal education. In other words, schools that we run in tents, mostly. Uh, but honorable work that's really, in most cases, taking the children forward. Our big problem is we have no accreditation, and nobody will accredit us. Um, and this has two repercussions. One is we have no system of evaluating ourselves, and we do it, but we, uh, we don't have anything we can show somebody else that we've evaluated. And we have no piece of paper that our children can take with them uh, anywhere. And I'm wondering, I mean, the question is, um, are there any ideas? I've tried with international agencies, 
blank wall. We are wonderfully, you know, in our planet, negligent of everything that's important. Uh, and so I cannot get a single international organization to move on this. And I wonder whether for within music we could do something, because, for example, one of the programs I run is music-led. From music, we teach maths, physics, uh, through music and creative arts. And I wonder whether there will be any way, as a sort of pilot, as an experiment, of A, trying to find some way of evaluating this very strange animal. Um, you know, forget about student profiles, but we can talk about quality of achievement, public engagement. Uh, we could meet most of the criteria. The question is, would there be a way of evaluating it? And secondly, would there be a way of accrediting it in terms of a paper? The one I'm program I'm talking about is for children between eight and 12, uh, roughly. Uh, uh, the, the, in our system, primary four to you know, seven, um, going into secondary level. And so it's actually just a question, it's a kind of international, it's a global question, uh, but maybe it's something that as you've got your act together so well uh, in the you know, European musical world, is, is, is there any way that something like that could be looked at or dealt with? Thank you. You know, uh, I'm the eternal optimist. So of course I would say yes. I mean something like you, that which you are presenting, that just for me says okay here is a huge opportunity in the world or a problem that needs needs somebody to look into it. Um, I think as a core, you know, to to evaluate something like that, there the the core criteria would probably work. But then there are things like facilities, which obviously would not. And one would never want to include them because that some, some area could fail uh, an evaluation like that. But I, I don't see any reason why it would not be possible. It's, it's more bringing it to the table. Okay, I mean, th thank you. I, and forgive me because that probably is something I should have asked you personally. Yeah. But but I'm doing it publicly because you never know. <laughs> you know uh, maybe somebody in the room uh, knows something that can help me. But uh, it, it's it's a ma and I've, it's not it's for ASEAN as well. Uh, ASEAN still has internally displaced populations, as you know, suffering this problem. So it's not just for the wider community. Uh, but uh, that, that, so if I say my apologies for raising it publicly, uh, 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 but um, uh, any, if anybody has any ideas, and we will bring, if you can tell us a way, we can bring it to the table, we'll bring it to the table. You know, I, I just have to and, uh, um, say that It's not exactly in response to, to what you're saying, Nigel, but, but it, it flashed into my head uh, that really there are so many places that are still in the, what we will, for all practical purposes, we can say the old-fashioned way of, of uh, evaluating quality. The, um, I was just last year in, in 2015, we're talking, on a committee in the UK, very small committee, international committee, uh, with the, the purpose to evaluate um, the private higher education institutions and see which ones deserved public funding or continuing a public funding. And the criteria we were given to look at was whether the institution was actually world renowned or not. And that's of course a very imperialistic idea, you know. So right there, one, one <laughs> became really, well, got, got put, off, put off, I have to say. But then reading the self-evaluation reports from the institutions was still more shocking in many ways um, because what they used to prove 
what an impact they had globally was exactly what, what Jenny was saying. They listed everybody who had ever won a nomination to any kind of a prize in the world, uh, you know, uh, any competition. So maybe an institution would list as their evidence for being world leading uh, was that they had had 15 people win big competitions. Uh, and things like, and, th and this is, this is such a totally unacceptable view of who you are in context to the world and the needs of, of, of our, you know, uh, of our environment of, of the globe. Uh, obviously, this was a, a task, and, and, and our place was not to criticize this, but try to try to go go with this and try to point out, you know where we felt uh, institutions were actually not being proud enough of all kinds of things they were doing to really make a difference in the world. Uh, so the discussions were quite interesting with the, with the UK funding body afterwards because they, they had the tendency they, to look, look at these, these prize, prizes, these uh, but hadn't somehow conceived to take into consideration that, that setting up programs in refugee camps or, or sending students to work in, in uh, areas of conflict or something like that, that that actually had more world impact and made the institution really look better in our eyes than whether they had an Oscar nominee or, a, or a, somebody winning an Emmy or Tchaikov being in the Tchaikovsky competition or something. I, I wanted to thank all three of you for a fascinating discussion. Um, as I was sitting here, I was thinking about our Southeast Asian community and the efforts we've been, we've been many of us in the room have been engaged with to interconnect that community uh, through our association of CEDAM. And one of the discussions that's repeatedly happened over our first 10 years, we're almost at 10 years now, uh, is, is, is assessment for ASEAN in, and assessment for music schools in this region. But the answer was always not ready, no, you know, it, it'll, it'll, it won't, it's not the time. But maybe that was from the idea of assessment as more of what Professor Sharkey was mentioning as a bureaucratic tool where, where people are scared of percentages and scared of ratios, but whereas this mu music seems like a much more, a much more uh, open, open-minded approach to assessment, that might be in our next 10 years of, of moving forward with, with CEDAM, hopefully, um, as it continues to grow, uh, the model that Southeast Asia should be looking at um, for, for quality, quality development in, in the region, so. Uh, um, I, uh, when you spoke just now, uh, it brought an idea to me, is that uh, personally, uh, we just, uh, a former student came to us and say, well, I need your help because I'm organizing uh, a sim a meeting, a professional meeting, on how to implement um, new technologies for kids and have this meeting. But uh, I wish to organize that meeting and I need your help. And my answer was, okay, we will provide you some concerns, we will discuss with you, but we don't want to be part of the symposium. This, that's your stuff. And what you just said, say that music, maybe that was one of the questions of Jenny. Music is not, speaking of music, it's not to say that music should come here. It's probably just helping that this symposium is on the Asian social cultural development. So things we cannot decide. Of course, music cannot say. Music can just help 
with methodology, with questions. And finally, there is all this is quite funny for me because it's always the same principle. That's how you, you said very nice things on my help, of course, but I must say that I didn't do much. Just raise questions. And since 2007, I, I just help you raise questions. That's the only thing I did because the solutions, the answers, didn't come from me. I, I had no answers to, to say, just to say. So on the assessment of quality, first, of course, you have to say which quality you want to reach. And the new perspective of this social cultural development coming really up, even if it's quite already for a long time, this is typically a subject where it has to be built in this region with your concerns, with your questions, with your goals. Yesterday we had a discussion very interesting on the new Asian ensemble. And some question came up, quite, quite surprising questions, of course. And this is a question of quality, a deep question of quality on how what kind of funding do we accept for our projects? This is a question of quality. And this kind of question, the answer is only able to be given by all the stakeholders here. So the, the only, uh, I think the only help and the, the real interest of people in music would reflect, to be re able to reflect on that, all those questions. Maybe if you invite I don't, people to be part of committees, of course they can answer. But still, it's, uh, I'll say some words later on, but it's something quite new that is happening here in the global context, not only in this house, but in the global context. And when you look what's happening here, when you see what's happening in our countries, we have no answer to give. I fully agree that we, as Asians, we really need to ask more questions and challenge people and systems. Be naughty, don't be so obedient, because it's just so easy to fall into a cycle, a sequence. It just makes life easier. People get things done repetitively. So really challenge, make life difficult for others. Like why should we conform to their rules that doesn't fit us? Um, then again, the, the impact of, of, the impact that we have on community is our strongest tool because even if we don't fit their boxes, but they can see it's all these good that we are doing, then how do they reconcile? Like we get a fail grade for that, but look, we have done all these. Like, why aren't you giving me the money? And I think I can only say to this, uh, it really all begins with conversations. And as you mentioned, Peter Renshaw, he has this wonderful uh, term, talk, he talks about the, the value of connecting conversations. And I think that's exactly what, what we should be doing. Wonderful, thank you very much. We can continue our conversations or um, uh, um, coffee, and also there's another two rooms coming up. So thank you for this starting point. So we're hoping that this will be the starting point of us asking questions, to be reasonably naughty, in, in encouraging others in making a quality that is our own in some way. So please continue with us uh, for the Thai uh, um, higher education in music. Uh, we already prepared the coffee for you in the meeting rooms in G201. So we move a, a building a little bit just to be there is a bit more comfortable. So G201 with coffees already on the table. 
And for another group of um, our participants today, you can also join uh, Dr. Monica Hennemann and Dr. Ruth here for the ideas about um, musicologies, how it reflects in this region and how musicologists can ask, can ans uh, can ask questions also in related to something. Um, this, will be in, th this will be in C300 because we had, we had a little bit of the temperature yesterday, so let's keep it cool and C300 for the musicology discussions, G201 for the Thai Higher Education meeting, and please do join us for those two things. And thank you very much again, our really <laughs> lovely friends here. Thank you. Thank you.